Oh, so today I'm going to walk through um, one of the demos that's included in Easy State. The name of that demo is called uh, Simple Demos, I think. Um, anyway, I'm going to use it to demonstrate some of the uh, different scenarios uh, that you can use Easy State in. At any rate, yes, I've, so I've imported that into Unity and um, it comes with this sample scene that has a couple of these game objects in it. Um, each game object is um, named after the behavior that um, it is using. Um, as you can see, there's an easy state machine uh, component on this game object that uses this behavior. So um, if we click play, uh, nothing will happen because I don't have any of these uh, state machines actively refreshing. So in order to make things happen, you have to select the state machine you want to update and then just run over to the inspector and click update and then for each of these uh, behaviors you'll be getting slightly different messages so you can see printing out in the console this um, particular behavior simulates um, a coin flip so as you update it it'll continue to um, print different messages to the console um, so I think probably the easiest way to kind of see what's going on with these uh, behaviors is actually to go um, to the Windows tab and then open the uh, Easy State Debugger and then we can um, just drag, we'll start with the coin flip and just drag that game object into the um, state machine property here um, and it loads up so to test it out you can just click execute behavior um, again, you're going to get the same messages to the console here um, with these execution summaries so you can see exactly what actions executed on each of these. Um, so you can see in the entry state we flipped the coin and uh, logged heads. Let's real quick run over to the designer to see what that looks like. Um, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, but yeah, so you can double click on entry state here and you see that it has this condition which is 50-50 um, with the destination here, a true and false destinations. Um, and you can see the action flip coin here. Um, so all of that lines up to what you see in the debugger. Um, so now that behavior makes a little bit more sense. Let's go ahead and open it back up in the debugger. So um, as, the, as I just said, the condition here is 50-50. So that means that 50% of the time it'll be true and 50% of the time it'll be false. So if you click Execute and then again, see it just continues to go between these two states. So the next uh, behavior I wanted to look at is um, called Mountain Climber. Basically, the idea here is to uh, demonstrate how um, cycle states are used. So in general, when I... It, would click execute behavior I would expect it to go through each of these states all the way until it gets to the end of the tree here um, but it doesn't um, as you can see it steps through one at a time um, until it goes back to the beginning um, and the reason it steps through one at a time is because we have these nodes marked as cycle states so if I jump back into the designer and I go over here to load a new, I'm gonna load that mountain climber design here. Um, so as you can see, it's loaded here, double click on here, and we can see that cycle state is checked to true. So when cycle state is set to true, uh, you enter the state, you execute whatever actions are within the state, and then that is the end of that execution frame. The next behavior I wanted to look at was uh, first beer. So if you look at this um, dragged in, we have a different colored node here that uh, represents a repeater uh, node. And basically what that does is it has a condition inside of it and the state machine will stay inside of this state until that can one of these conditions is met. Um, so again, if we load this in the designer, um, load that right there we can see double click here we see we have two conditions one condition is either you are 21 the character is 21 or the character is older than 21 
Um, so if I run over to this game object and you look here, we can see that it's using some data here. If you drop that down, you can see that the current age is 18. Um, and again, we can see that in the debug debugger um, actually as well. Kind of makes it easy to keep track of stuff. Um, so if you drop down test data, and then if we execute, um, we'll see um, this message here that says growing older by a year. And you'll notice that we went from interstate to the age state. Um, and then on the next execution uh, cycle, we will be inside of the age state. Um, as I said, because it'll continue to repeat until either we are 21, at which point you'll drink your first beer, or you're over 21 and you'll just be drinking beer normally. So um, as you can see, I've executed once and we've grown older by a year. The current age is now 19, so you click execute again. If you drop down the execution summary here, you can tell that the age action has been executed. And then also you can check the pre-execution data. And you can see that we have the current age of 19 before we executed the age action. And then after the execution, um, it was the, the age has been increased to 20. So on this next execution cycle, we'd expect the age to turn 21 and then we'll we'll transition into this um, here and as you can see uh, my first beer was very refreshing so that's great he got his first beer he turned 21 on the next execution cycle it'll will be over 21 at that point and uh, so yeah from here on out we'll just um, be skipping the drink first beer um, state and going straight to this state here so one I wanted to look at was the fortune teller um, this one has a little bit going on. It actually is demonstrating um, this yellowish node here um, represents an evaluator. Um, so far in easy state, probably most of what you use is Boolean logic, whereas this um, relies on scoring. Um, so it's a little, a little different idea here, but it has all of these um, connections here, each of these connections uh, returns a number, and the connection with the highest number is the one that's chosen uh, to transition to. So let's just check that out in the designer real quick. If I go and uh, load that uh, fortune teller design here, um, wow, okay, cool. So. Um, just drag that out there to make a little more sense. Um, so yeah, double click on this read fake node and you can see that there's, um, each one of these is using the same evaluator, which is in this case is just a random evaluator. Um, normally you would probably want like some sort of uh, utilitarian um, uh, calculation. Um, in this case, I'm just returning a random number between zero and one and the, uh, the evaluator that, gets the highest score is the one that ends up getting chosen. So if we jump back over to the debugger window, um, you can see that as this one executes, it'll cycle through all of the possibilities that it is connected to, because as I said, it's a random generator. So eventually every one of these will get um, selected. One interesting thing to note here is the reason that this line is connected um, in a kind of strange way here is um, it points to basically the way that easy state reuses um, reuses strongly typed uh, transitions and kind of pieces I guess so instead of uh, since these are all random evaluators um, instead of creating uh, eight different random evaluators it just reuses the same one eight times um, so that's why um, we have this little weird kind of artifact here but um, and uh, next I wanted to look at the um, it's complicated design here if we load that up we have a mess here basically it's a kind of a real messy dating simulator so um, if you check this out hit execute see what happens um, okay we generated a guy who is tall um, so we step through here this is kind of like a real tangled web, and I did it like this on purpose to show um, that there's no problems with handling kind of um, really 
complicated, uh, messy transitions. Um, so let's jump over to the design to see exactly how that this all works out and how it's resolved. So if I load, it's complicated here. Okay, so here's the it's complicated behavior. Uh, as we can see, the most complicated uh, transition scenario here is on this generate guy, um, this generate guy state. As you can see it has um, basically it has three or three conditions that it's checking at this point. Um, as you can see, these are priority ordered. So if you wanted to change the priority um, of uh, a certain condition. Uh, you would just you can move it back and forth with these buttons. Basically, we start at the top and we start asking questions um, at the top, and we uh, continue to work our way down until uh, one of these happens to be true. So we start off by asking, "Is this guy tall?" And if he is, we should uh, go to the safer later state here. Um, but if he's not, then the next question um, to ask is, you know, is he fat? Um, and so on and so forth, all the way down the stack of conditions. So um, that's how that works. So you can kind of, uh, if you spend enough time here, you can kind of see how the um, logic tree would play out here. So if we go jump back into the uh, debugger, you can see um, if we just execute this a couple times, basically the different ways that um, it would work out. So you can check in the console to compare uh, what kind of random people get built and then kind of how they fare inside this amazing uh, dating simulator. So the next one I wanted to look at is the next and last one really is the whack-a-mole. It's a very simple design. It uses the execution node. So if we click execute, it's going to be a little harder to understand what's going on here. So if we looked here, you can just see that Okay, so we have some moles that popped up um, in holes 2, 2, 7, and 5. Makes a lot of sense. We got two moles in one hole here, so that's great. And one of them got hit. So to make sense of this, let's jump over to the designer and load that behavior. Um, so now if we click on that, this reads a little easier and makes sense here. So basically, we have this action, which is whack-a-mole, and that um, prints out to the console. And so then we have multiple conditions here, which uh, checks holes one through four. And if there, the mole does exist in that hole, um, in that update cycle, then we will hit it. Um, so as you can see here, we had a mole in hole two, right so it then proceed to hit the mole uh, basically the advantage here is you can have multiple conditional um, actions inside um, a single state and when the state is entered it will just run through these actions real quick and ask the questions that need to be asked and if um, any of them are yes then it will execute the action otherwise the action does not get executed so going back to the debugger we can see if you just run this a couple times, um, that, yeah, okay, so we had moles in holes one and two, um, so that means that two moles would have gotten whacked in that frame. Um, so that is how the execution node works. And I, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Um, if you have any other questions, you can shoot me an email. Uh, my email will be in the video description. Um, thanks for watching.